This video is an attempt to show historical accuracy and an unbiased viewpoint of the Battle of the Alamo. Thanks for letting us settle in the rich, fertile land known as Texas. Yes, Texas is a land of promise and prosperity. However, you must agree to a few simple terms. That's fine. Anything for our new friends? We don't ask much. Just promise to become Mexican citizens and convert to Catholicism. Sure, that should be no problem. Oh, by the way, we don't have slaves in this country. That's fine. Our settlers can easily adapt to any situation. Map of Texas, the 1800s. Settlers flocked to the new land, eagerly seeking adventure, opportunity, and most of all, a land to call their own. Things were fine between the two different cultures, but it became quickly evident that the settlers were not holding their end of the agreement. They held slaves and wouldn't become Mexican citizens. Finally, tensions rose to an extreme, and the settlers occupied an old mission or fort, the As Alamo. you can see on this map, General Santa Ana is on his way to the Alamo from San Antonio. This is the first step in order for them to reclaim their fort. 1,500 soldiers marched with Santa Ana. The Texan defenders stationed at the Alamo had about 300 men. The Mexican infantry carried the standard-issue brown vest, a British-made musket equipped with a standard-issue bayonet, and the Mexican cavalry were issued a carbine, a shorter version of a musket or rifle, and a lance made with a wood, wood and a metal tip, which was useful for fighting infantry. The Alamo defenders were armed with muskets, rifles, and pistols. The Mexican and U.S. armies carried swords as well, but they were mainly for identifying rank and giving battle commands. All right, men, this is it. What we've been preparing for. Whether we prevail or perish today, we must remain vigilant. Watch the walls, men, at any time the enemy could storm our barricades. Remember why we fight here. Remember, this is the Alamo. He's right, men. This is our time to prove our worth as soldiers. This is our chance to make a difference. We will defend our rights no matter what. The defending troops were not ready when the Mexican troops arrived on February 23rd, 1836. The President General made an unheard of choice to wait for the rebels to prepare. This decision surprised the rebels and the troops under him. It was a great show of military courtesy, but may not have been the best tactical decision. The Mexican army slowly reclaimed their fort. The battle proved to be a costly one to take both armies. The Alamo defenders lost 150 to 220 men, and the Mexican army lost around 600, killed or wounded. Contrary to what some people say, the Alamo wasn't a massacre. In fact, the women, children, and non-combatants, or slaves, were released and allowed to go home. The victory proved to be a costly one for the Mexican army, but one must consider the defenders' advantages. The Mexican had more men, however, the rebels had the advantage of the fort, the advantage of the courteous general who waited for them to prepare, and some may argue that they had spirit and the good reasons to fight. All these advantages must be taken into consideration for the outcome of the battle. The most notable effect is the increased tensions between U.S. and Mexican relations. These tensions would eventually lead to the two-year-long bloody Mexican-American War. The Mexican-American War would also lead to the U.S. acquiring large swaths of land Finally, the Alamo was the first step in the annexation of Texas and the eventual overthrow of General Santa Ana. In later battles, Texan rebels yelled, Remember the Alamo! as a battle cry. In Mexico, the Alamo resulted in many lost men and led some people to question Santa Ana's leadership. Though facts are still debated today, both countries remember the Battle of the Alamo as an iconic and important part of the Mexican-American War. It's up to you to decide who was in the right, and always remember the Alamo.